At this EHA meeting, we presented a poster summarizing the matched adjusted indirect comparisons of efficacy and safety of acalabrutinib versus ibrutinib for treatment-naive CLL patients. So we're fortunate in CLL now to have two BTK inhibitors approved in the frontline space, abrutinib, the first-in-class molecule, and the newer, more selective BTK inhibitor, acalabrutinib. And we all are eagerly awaiting the results of the Elevate RR study, which is a head-to-head -head study of these two drugs that will help us compare the efficacy and the safety profiles. Uh, but unfortunately, we don't have data yet available from that study, yet we're still faced with the decision when we sit in front of a patient of trying to decide which of these two drugs to use for our patients. So in addition to comparing across the prospective clinical trials uh, that we have on each agent, we thought it would be useful to try to provide some kind of indirect comparison uh, utilizing the trial data that are available. And that was the genesis of this matched adjusted indirect comparison. The methodology here adjusts for the differences in the baseline patient characteristics between the trials and is really an alternative way to compare these studies. The idea is to utilize the baseline treatment characteristics and patient characteristics from one trial and then match the aggregate data from a comparator trial. And then after matching, these treatment outcomes can be balanced uh, and the study populations can be a bit more accurately compared than our usual method of just trying to eyeball this across the, the clinical trial publications. So the sources of data for this study uh, for acalabrutinib were from the Elevate TN study, where 179 patients were treated in uh, an acalabrutinib monotherapy arm and an additional 179 in an acalabrutinib plus G, GA101, uh, or obinutuzumab arm. The comparator here was the Resonate 2 study, where we looked at the abrutinib monotherapy arm, 136 patients, and the Illuminate study, where we looked at the abrutinib obinutuzumab arm of 113 patients. So kind of at a high level, just summarizing what we found here, as, as we have suspected from our clinical practice, we saw some lower rates of adverse events with the acalabrutinib uh, arm compared to uh, the abrutinib arm on the other studies. Uh, and these included somewhat lower rates of atrial fibrillation, infection, hypertension, and major hemorrhage. Uh, we did see uh, a little bit higher rate of headache as we've noticed in the acalabrutinib treated patients. Uh, and we saw relatively similar rates of many other toxicities. Uh, in terms of efficacy outcomes, uh, we did see some improvements in acalabrutinib uh, compared with abrutinib plus obinutuzumab uh, in terms of reduced risk of death, although this certainly warrants further investigation uh, because the PFS rates actually look fairly similar. Uh, so overall, I think the data from this poster provides some initial insights, particularly around the safety comparison uh, I think we see some interesting trends as well in the efficacy comparison, uh, but certainly there are limitations of this type of analysis. And in particular, I think we really do need to await prospective clinical data before we can make a, a really certain comparison between these two very, very effective agents for patients with CLL.